I'm the one who will be seated at the right hand of the power. It's interesting. He doesn't even say the word God in the verse, but the high priest knows exactly who he's talking about. It's the positional language. Dexios. This is just genitive. It's the same word. Don't be bothered that the ending looks different. Dexios, where we get the English word dexterity, right? If you have good dexterity, it means, you know, you're fast, you're qualified, you can use your hands well, right? It comes from this Greek word, dexios, since most people are right-handed, like 90% of the populace. The Hebrew yamin, the right-hand side. The right-hand side, this is where the viceroy sits next to the king. He's in the right-hand side. Like Yosef HaTzadik, the, the, the type, the archetype, by his very life demonstrates what Mashiach ben Yosef, the Messiah, who son of Joseph, who comes and suffers for the people, what he'll be like with Yosef, as he's told by even the king of Egypt, demonstrates this principle that other than me and this throne, no one is above you in all the land. Yeshua is at the right hand of the glory where the Memra was known. The high priest, he's familiar with Memra literature. He's familiar with Jubilees. He's familiar with the wisdom of Shlomo. He's familiar with Ina. He's familiar how the Memra sits at the right hand, how the Memra jumped down from his throne and fought for his people in Egypt, for his before his first born. He knows exactly what this claim means. And you know what happened. The positional language uses by claiming to be at the Dexion Chez Dunamis, at the right hand of the power. The power, what's the power? That's Hashem. I'm at the right hand of the power. And I and I'm becoming Echomenon. This is the, the Hebrew word ba. Again, he's tapping into the Baruch Haba B'Shem Adonai. He says, until you say Baruch Haba B'Shem Adonai, blessed is he who returns, rather who comes, who arrives in the name of Adonai. I will come back. There's so much rich. The expression is pregnant. So much he's tapping into here. You yourself said it. Imagine the gaze of his eyes at that moment staring into the eyes of the priest. Can you imagine how intimidating it must have been? The Messiah, the Pantokrator, <laughs> he's looking in his eyes and he says, you yourself just said it and you will see the Son of Man reclining at the right-hand side of the power coming on the clouds of heaven. You're going to see me one day doing this and he's staring in his eyes they're close enough you know he could they're close enough right to be spat on face to face can you imagine it in your mind it's nice to do this sometimes when you read the bible to so don't just read it like a history lesson but to imagine situationally what was happening there i got this from a fellow christian prince who is probably the best anti-islamic scholar out there to imagine yourself in the scenario, what was happening, what they were looking at, you know, how people sighed <gasps> right before they ripped their, their garbs, the garments. Mati Tahoe 7, 12 to 14 by Dr. Stern's translation says, Ways, treat others as you would like them to treat you. That sums up the teaching of the Torah and the prophets. Go into the narrow gate. For the gate which leads to destruction is wide and the road broad. This means not every Christian is going to heaven, friends. Not every Jew is going to heaven. Not everyone who calls himself a Ben or Bat Yisrael is going to heaven. Most People who call themselves Christians are going to hell. They're going to be destroyed. Because narrow is the gate. Narrow. Messiah is not looking for lip service. 
Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter in to the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father. What does a servant do? If you are called good and faithful servant, does it, what does it mean if you are a servant? King David refers to God oftentimes. He says, Abdecha. He calls himself humbly. He's the king, but he says, your servant. What does it mean if you are a servant? What is the verb that describes your life? If you could pick one verb for our lives, if we are servants, what is it? We serve. We serve. Serving isn't lip service. Serving isn't saying, Jesus is the Son of God. I believe it. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything that you say you believe or that I say I believe. The demons believe too and they tremble with fear. They don't just believe, they know it. They know it more than any of us know it. It's true, probably. The servant serves. Welcome in, good and faithful servants. But it is a narrow gate and a hard road that leads to Chaim, life. And only a few find it. That doesn't mean billions and billions and billions. Goodness. How many people have had the label Jew or Christian in the history of the world, you think? How many uncounted billions? Probably 10 billion, maybe? I don't know. We could do some. We could make a model sometime, maybe. A few will find it. Are you a little frightened? How many times have you read this? Sometimes you have to slow down your reading. Parse what it says. Think about it. Selah. Only a few find it. That should be scary as hell. But if our focus is service, to our father who happens to be king, if that is our focus, to serve him, if every day when we go to sleep, we have the introspection before we lay down, we say the bedtime shema, and we forgive everybody as, as is in, in the kingdom culture, in our culture, we forgive everyone who sinned against us, who sinned against our honor, anyone who acted against us, please do not judge them for my sake, Lord, have mercy, don't punish them for anything they did against me. We are in alignment with Mashiach then. For if you forgive others for their sins against you, then you too shall be forgiven by my Heavenly Father. Every night we should have that, we should feel like it wasn't enough what we did that day. Help me to do better tomorrow, Abba. I forgive all those people. I forgive my nasty neighbors. <laughs> Not all of them, I forgive, there's one in particular. I forgive my nasty neighbor, <laughs> you know. I forgive all those people burning trash all the time. <laughs> we got to forgive them. And look at ourselves and judge ourselves as lacking. Help me to be better tomorrow. And then serve. To be called good servant, you have to serve. Mikoi says, Rob, what about all Jews? Be saved. Romans 11, 25, 26. Rob Cho was quoting from the Mishnah there. Her sister is talking about when Shaul says, you know that it's said... Or that is written, all of Israel shall be saved. This is a quote from the Mishnah. The Mishnah teaches that all of Israel shall be saved. But even today we read about the nefesh, asher, the, ne the nefesh, the person who does what? Does a transgression, beyad rama, what happens? An intentional transgression, what happens? Nefesh hahi, hekaret tikaret shall indeed be cut off me ameha from her people. That's not Israel anymore. That person is not Israel anymore. Someone who's been cut off is not Israel. See? They get all these people in the states running around supporting the fagalas and all this stuff, you know. Saying, oh, I'm a Jew, and they're cool, I'm a Jew, I like bagels. I like bagels. But they're 
Mechalalim. <laughs> They're violators. Mechalalei Shabbat. They break Shabbat. What are the, the fourth commandment which they couldn't even keep. They are Yikaret. They're cut off from Israel. So that does not apply. So it does not mean that every ethnic Jew is going to be in heaven. What it does mean is the native born and the adopted B'nai Israel who have not been cut off. So says them in the Greek, shall be saved. That's what it means. Because if someone's been cut off from Israel, they've been cut off. They're not Israel anymore. Now, the good thing is a cut off branch can still make Teshuvah, right? You can return, come back, and be regrafted in. It's a nice question. Thanks for that question. Yomar says, Deuteronomy 10, 12, Hashem requires us to serve him with all our being and resources. Well put. In Yochanan 14, 15, Yomar points out, serving him with love. Imatem havimoti, if you have loved me, hare shetish maru et mitzvotai. That's right. In the Greek it says, in agape senian, if you love me, keep my commandments. Oh, guard. I like how Yomar put it there. Safeguard my commandments. Only a few find it. Now, I think he's speaking in hyperbole. I don't think it means three people get saved from the history of mankind. That would be a problem. Moshe, Eliyahu, and Enoch, <laughs> the rest of us are damned. <laughs> but you go to a congregation, pick a random congregation. I'm not going to say any names because people might misinterpret that, like I'm judging them or something. Walk into a random congregation of believers. I personally believe most people you bump into are not saved. Most of the people you meet are not on the narrow way. They've deluded themselves. They're not serving God. It's a culture club. It's a coffee club. It's a place with nice music. It's a place where you go to feel good about yourself. It's a therapy session. It's where your friends are at. Such a faith cannot save us. Only a few find it. It is a narrow gate and a hard derech. What does derech mean? Derech relates to halacha, Jewish law. It's a hard road. The Talmud, in Tractate Shabbat, page 31, Hillel the Elder teaches us, Whatever is hateful to you, do not do it to your fellow. That is the whole Torah. The rest is explanation. And a lot of us, we want to stop there. Yay! <laughs> do it to others as you have them do it to you. Da, 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 da. The Torah is through. <laughs> what, what's next? Go study. Or as Yeshua pens it, go and sin no more. And sin is defined in Torah Hashem. Jem writes, Amen. Live here and obey. Always have Emunah and Bitachon by his Hesed. May we be strengthened to collectively live in Hashem's holiness every day of our lives. Well put. Sit tight. Almost done. Threads to prevent too much traveling. Then Hashem said to Moshe, saying, Speak unto the Bnei Israel and say unto them, Make for yourselves seat seats on the confei big dehem, on the corners of your garments. But this word confei, it makes you think of the an eagle's wings as well. The Dolotam, for their generations, that means what? The Dolotam, what does it mean? This is idiomatic language. For their generations means forever. It means forever. It doesn't mean until I send the Messiah. And they shall set up with the tzitzit on the corner a string of tzitzit. That's that mysterious color. Kind of like indigo or something. This beautiful sea snail was rediscovered 
by an Ashkenazi rabbi who traveled to Israel in the 1800s from Poland. We call him the Baal Techelet. And it should be for you all the tzitzit that when you see it, and remember, you will remember the mitzvot of Adonai, and you shall do with them. And lo tatkuru, there it is. You shall not wonder. You shall not twist. You shall not pervert. You shall not, remember the one definition? Ignore the tradition. After your own, after you all's mind, singular mind, after your eyes, with which you might prosecute yourselves after them, following your eyes, so that you shall remember and do all my commandments, and you will be Kedoshim, rather you will become. Let's translate it that way. Hayak can mean to be or to become. Bihitem, we are in the process of becoming Kedoshim, holy ones. Lelo Hechem, for your God. Ani Adonai Elohechem, asher hatzaiti etchem me'etz mekla'i mi be'lichyot lachem le'elohim. Ani Adonai Elohechem, I am Adonai, your God, who has brought you out who has brought out all of you from the land of Egypt to be for yourselves belonging to God. I am Hashem, your God. Let me bar 1537-41. In our last slide, I'm going to finish with this. So what's our challenge from all of this if you didn't get it already? Let me bar 1428. I'll read the ESV so you don't think it's me. With my own biased translation, say to them, as I live, declares the Lord, what you have said in my hearing, I will do to you. Your dead body shall fall in this wilderness. And all of your number listed in the census from 20 years and upward who have grumbled against me. Not one shall come into the land where I swore that I would make you dwell, except a few. For narrow is the way and hard is the derech. Only a few. In this case, Caleb, the son of Yefume and Yehoshua bin Nun. But your little ones who you said would become a prey, that means attacked by animals, I will bring in. And they shall know the land that you have rejected. But as for you, your dead body shall fall in the wilderness. And your children shall be shepherds in the wilderness 40 years and shall suffer for your faithlessness until the last of your dead bodies lies in the wilderness according to the number of the days in which you spied out the land, 40 days, a year for each day, you shall bear your iniquity. Really, guilt is a better translation there. 40 years, and you shall know my displeasure. I, the Lord, have spoken. Surely this will do, this I will do to all this wicked congregation who are gathered together against me. In this wilderness, they shall come to a full end, and there shall they shall die. And to conclude, in the book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 24, the CJB translates, But I consider my own life of no importance to me whatsoever. This is a servant's attitude. As long as I can finish the course. He's talking about the derech. He's talking about walking in halacha ahead of me. The task I receive from the Lord Yeshua to declare in depth the besorat the good news of God's Ahava and Chesed. We're so grateful to you. Please, O oh Lord, help us. Daily and nightly to understand our frailty our weakness. Give us the power to forgive others and give us the strength to walk in your mitzvot. Help us to be truly convicted, everyone who hears my voice. Be Adonai. Tishlach lano et wachot shecha. Kenachu rotsim lechavot mishkanecha. We want to be your sanctuary. Let us not be deceived. Kilo natura, that we might not.
turn aside, that we might not wander about after the collective mind of the greater Gentile community, which says, oh, you're trying to be a Jew, or oh, the law was crucified with Christ, or oh, this and oh, that. Help us not to be sucked in to the majority's mindset. Not just for the sake of salvation. We want to do your will. We want to be counted among the few who walk on that hard road, the narrow path where most people don't walk. Let our lives be service to you. May we truly do worship as the true, truest, purest form of worship in Hebrew is avodah, service. La avod et Eloheinu, Elohei Yisrael. Gam anachnu gam yaldeinu, v'schut Yeshu HaMashiach, al tirei aleinu Adonai, bevakasha bi tirei nachak al dam bincha Yeshu HaMashiach. Please don't look at us, don't look at our acts, but only look on the blood of your son, Yeshua the Mashiach. Okay, Shavuot Tov, everyone. You guys have a great week. I hope you found the Josh edifying. Shavuot Tov. Of course. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. P.O.P. You're very welcome. Shalom, shalom. Be well, sister. Brother Tom. Zakin, Tom. Elder, Tom. Be welcome, Biko. Everyone is writing to the. Be welcome, Annie. Shalom. Shalom. Have a great time at Shul. Yokohama's off to Shul now. It's morning there in Florida. <laughs> You're very welcome, Yomar, for the Josh. Welcome, Betsy, Jan, Eric, everybody. Have a great week ahead. Sage.